probably the biggest piece of news to unpack here uh, is everything going on with the Hollywood Foreign Press Association and the controversy surrounding the situation. I had to dig um, because I didn't even, I, I honestly, I was confused. I didn't really under, I read all the articles, but I was still confused. I was like, what is going on? I don't understand. Um, and kind of my goal here is to, uh, to help anyone else who's confused to understand what's going on. Have you seen what's happened with the Hollywood foreign press, Miguel? Guys, if you're curious about what the Hollywood foreign press is like, honestly, just watch the Golden Globes that's hosted by Ricky Gervais. And it'll pretty much tell you everything you need to know. And the bulk of his conversation is the Hollywood Ford and Press is just a bunch of racists. It's just filled with a bunch of racists. Oh <laughs> you, should, uh, you guys, you, you need to see this. You guys need to check it out. Did Brad, he say that? It. He says it. I don't, I mean, I, I watched it, but I don't, I don't, honestly, that was a while ago. I don't even remember. My man, he has been the host, I think, four or three times. And the first one, like every single one of them, he gets more and more absurd. He keeps saying the most outlandish stuff, but it is Ricky Gervais about <laughs> yeah about like Hollywood in general. And what's funny is that the Golden Globes keep asking him back. So he's like, yeah. "Why are you guys asking me back? I'm literally talking shit about all of you." But yeah, if you guys want to know much about the Hollywood Foreign Press, just just watch Ricky Gervais because he'll funny. tell you everything about Tweet it. Tweet at Ricky Gervais and he'll, he'll yeah. spill the beans. Yeah, um, exactly. But for, so for those of you who don't know, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association or the HFPA, um, it's a nonprofit group of foreign journalists, critics, photographers, any, anybody who is reporting on entertainment uh, media in some form of outlet. Um, and they report on the entertainment industry, specifically film and television within the United States. States, States. I don't even know what I'm saying. The United States, whatever the hell the United States is. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> they're... I, I hate myself. The uh, United David Spades of America. That's right, the United David Spades. Um, they're members of digital news outlets, newspapers, radio stations, magazines, TV shows, whatever the works. Um, there are 87 members. I think, I, I think it's 87. I know there's less than 90. Mm -hmm. um, and most notably, what you've probably heard them for is if you've watched the Golden Globes, just like what Miguel said, they host the Golden Globes. The Golden Globes are their baby. Every year in January, when the Golden Globes come on, the HFPA is what puts that on. Um, so their membership, you're, you're probably thinking like, who the hell is a part of the association? Like, how do you, how do you get to do that? Um, Be I did some different. Oh <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. I'm totally kidding. But yes, be racist. What? <laughs> I'm just repeating what he says, man. I'm, I don't don't kill to, the messenger. I, whoo, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a sip of beer after what you just said. <laughs> but I, I don't know. The, the Hollywood Foreign Press always seems like a, the most pretentious group I can think of when it comes to just Hollywood in general. Do you know what I mean? Do you, do I, you get my, do you get my, like, I, I, I get it. I think it's it? a lot. I, I think, I don't know. Here, let, let's keep going. Let's dig a little bit deeper. Okay. Um, because I did a little bit of digging and here's what I find out. So, and, and let me say this, all of this information is online. Again, we have no sources. I don't know who, I don't, this is online. This is on their website. This is on Wikipedia. It, it's on multiple different pages. You can find out this information. Um, every year, up to five journalists can be uh, admitted into the association. There's two types of statuses. There's active status, there is inactive status or non-active status, I believe is what it's called. Um, obviously, right now, there are 87 active members in the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. And there's, I mean, probably thousands, if not more, inactive members um, that, you know, they're associated with it, but they're not actually a member um, that is active. And if you wish to remain active, you have to be accredited by the MPAA the Motion Picture Association of America. You have to submit your work, you have to submit your pictures, your articles, your movie reviews, your, your you know, whatever you do, whatever your style of journalism is, you have to submit that and you have to be accredited by them to be a member of the um, HFPA, which allows you to vote. Um, you know, that's, I think they serve on different committees. They do different outreach things, different charities, different, uh, the, they post the Golden Globes. I'm not sure. 
um, if they're members are the ones who actually uh, vote on nominees and who vote on winners for the Golden Globes. I'm not positive. Um, I feel like they do. I would, I would say probably, yeah, because I think there's probably some controversy with that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have to be accredited with the MPAA if they wish to remain an active member. Um, and obviously under the course of the last few days and weeks, they have become under fire by actors and actresses, by filmmakers, production companies, fans, film studios, because of their lack of diversity. And there have also been claims of misconduct from previous years, from this year. Um, And people are, you know, everybody is demanding a pretty significant overhaul of the entire uh, association. Um, Or, you know, a gasp. lot of production companies are going to pull out. What'd you say? I said gasp. As if I'm surprised. <laughs> I know, right? Um, you know, NBC, it's no secret. You know, it's been out there for a few days now. NBC has canceled the 2022 Golden Globe Awards. Um, and, you know, in solidarity with, you know, underrepresented peoples and with these actors and actresses that have had poor experiences with them. Um you know, they want meaningful change. Here's what NBC had to say uh, about the these changes. They said, we continue to believe that the HFPA is committed to meaningful reform, uh, but however, change of this magnitude takes time and work, and we feel strongly that the FP, HFPA needs time to do it right. As such, NBC will not air the 2022 Golden Globes. Assuming the organization executes on its plan, we are hopeful that we will be in a position to air the show in January 2023. So I'm, I take that as it's not happening. Like no matter what changes they make this year, NBC is not airing the Golden Globes next year. So there will be no gold. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, there will be no Golden Globes next mm. year. Is that what you do? You kind of get the same thing out of that statement. I kind of got the same gist from what I'm reading too, and uh, yeah. I always thought it's like the Golden Globes is like a precursor of the Oscars because it's like yeah, whoever a wins lot of that pretty much gets gets the Oscar as well, and uh, it will be interesting to see without without the Golden Globes. But again, like it's not like I don't know. It's out of out of the Oscars and the Golden Globes. The Golden Globes always seems like the more controversial one just because of the Hollywood foreign press. And um, I think the fact that, uh, is it is it MS, MSNBC, right? NBC. NBC. <laughs> that's, a, that's a new station when I was thinking of. <laughs> the, well, NBC is too, but. <laughs> yeah, I keep thinking, I keep thinking that the fact, I'm glad that they're like standing in solidarity for it because I mean. Yeah, me too. It's, it's just been like, it's been like a, con- a known thing for a while that the Golden Globes have always been like kind of like a, um, I don't know, like a icky kind of thing. Like it's it's never like you never agree with most of the decisions that's fair. made there. You know what that's I mean? Fair. I, I would say a lot of people fr- probably feel the same way. Um, and I, you know, I think I, I've seen a lot of people say that that you know the consistency of the nominees and the winners from the Golden Globes to the Academy Awards, um, which of course the 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 Golden Globes are run by. The, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, the Academy Awards are run by the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences. Um, and I think, you know, I, at least from what I gather, the, the HFPA is a little bit more likely to sway in terms of their interest versus the Academy as in what movie, what actor, what actress was better? Like what was the best film of the year? Things like that. And I'm not saying that the Hollywood Foreign Press Association is all... It, completely corrupt and they're just people are saying hey put this movie first put this actress first this person wins this person i I don't mean it like that but i I think there is definitely some talk of one being a little bit more easy to sway than the other um oh the kind of gloves are definitely way more skewed there's no question about it yeah i I think i'm not saying i'm not saying the academy isn't skewed either i mean all of them are skewed right to some degree and that but. like you said that's not to say that the academy is perfect mm-hmm. um but it, you know it's just it, it's interesting um so th- this kind of smoke snowballed because the la times conducted an investigation in 2021 that revealed that of the 87 current active members of 
the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, not a single member was African American. <laughs> and the majority of them are male. Now, keep yeah. in mind that these journalists are from f- over 55 different countries. Uh, and, um, you know, they, they've gained a lot of power within the industry. Uh, you know, just off the top of your head, a- after everything we've been through over the last year and a half, you agree that that's a problem, right? I do. And it's, I mean, it's tough to like put, to like think about it. And like, I mean, like, honestly, it's not like something that, I'm going to have like a huge uproar about like, this is terrible, but it's definitely something that I noticed. It's like, yeah, this is something that's, you know, obviously it needs to be put in the spotlight because if you think about all of the stuff that's happened with, at the Golden Globes and how many people are just talking about the Golden Globes, about how like skewed it is, you have to look at who's in it now. Like, and whenever you look at the Hollywood foreign press and see how much, diversity there is or lack thereof um Mm -hmm. it's definitely something to bring up yeah and and i think this year will probably be one of the one of the years where they're like okay we definitely need to take a look at this because there's some some of that up right and 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 they are and they they form committees and they're they're it seems like they're committed to meaningful change um Mm -hmm. it i i think that nbc and a lot of these other um, these these investors and these people who have ties with them want to make sure that it's done the right way and that it's mm. not meaningful change just to get the press and people off their back. Um, I thought this was interesting. I didn't know this. I found this online. Uh, and I thought you would find this interesting too because we actually just talked about Brendan Fraser um, mm. a little bit uh, a, a few weeks ago. I think, what was that, in episode 20 maybe? I think it was... Uh... 90s. Of, of let's talk movies yeah um so in 2018 brendan fraser uh claimed that the former president of the hfpa i'm not gonna name him sexually assaulted him um and you know many people believe that the backlash of speaking out against the hfpa and against that particular person snowballed his career and not completely ended his career because there were other factors i think brendan fraser was sick at one point i mean i i think there were multiple things but many people believe that that was a huge contributing factor to brendan fraser kind of falling out of the industry um yeah. and i know you you've talked about his his filmography and his acting a whole lot you're a big brendan fraser fan so i i was curious to see uh to to get your thoughts on that on you know the hfpa's involvement or possible possible involvement let me say that well i mean it's i kind of i i remember seeing that story like i don't know probably like film rant or like watch mojo or something like that some movie news channel on youtube and they talked about it and i was like i was really like you know not shocked by it okay yeah i was shocked by it but i was also like kind of sad for it because i always liked brendan fraser and yeah you know obviously in the mummy series and then all the other ones George, uh, it's George of the Jungle. Yeah, George of the Jungle and all of those. And I mean, he's a pretty solid actor. And I always wondered what happened to him because he was honestly at the same level as, say, Keanu Reeves and um, Tom Cruise during that time. Because it was it was during that decade whenever uh, all of these actors that we now come to love and are like top A-list actors, like those those some of those actors I grew up and they're, you know, again, top stars and then there's other ones that just kind of fell off and you kind of wonder like well what happened to them and uh, yeah. Brandon Fraser was one of them that I think wasn't technically his fault it was the fault of uh, the Hollywood business itself because we can't we can't um, uh, disregard like the corruption of Hollywood in general like there, there's some corruption there and there's sure. too many abuse of power and you see that with most of these female actors and when they talk about all the abuse they went through i mean look at what happened with harvey weinstein that was atrocious yes and, and the fact that that happened kind of makes you think like 
well, what else is there? Because it's not just Harvey Weinstein. There's plenty more in that uh, pool of the Hollywood uh, business. And Brendan Fraser is just another one of those. Uh, Brendan Fraser and Terry Crews are the two that I think mm. are the most pivotal one because it goes to show that Hollywood and all of that stuff, all the abuse of power, not only goes against goes after uh, female actors, but also goes after all of the actors, no matter what gender. And it's it it shows it shows a a tale of like it shows a tale of like how Hollywood's always been, and Hollywood has always been like a place where if you want to get somewhere, you're gonna have to do this to get there whether it's dirty, slimy, or undercutting someone or uh, submitting this to a higher power or power over there. And it's insane. It's ridiculous. And, um, but that's just been the way it's been. And whenever I kept thinking about the story of Brandon Frazier, I mean, it just, you know, just, it. It's a bummer. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it, it just, it saddens me because it's just another one of the actors that I come to love. And he's a victim of just, Hollywood in general and that goes for every every actor that has uh, shown um shown abuse I mean look at Britney Spears and again guys I'm not a fan of Britney Spears I wasn't a fan of her music but it's important to understand yeah it's important to understand like the shit that she's going through right now like she's still going through right now and I, like that's just the way the entertainment business is in general entertainment business in general is kind of like that and it's a real shame, right? Because I, again, from two movie lovers like the two like us, like we don't want to see that. We want to see all all uh, actors and entertainers like strive and you know do good. But the studios in general, like the studios and the all the people in the higher ups, like I don't know, like it's it's a dirty it's a dirty profession to be in. And Brandon Fraser is just one of those. And the long list of people that suffered from it. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's my two cents. I mean, you guys can agree with me or not, but it's, it's, that's how the way I think the Hollywood studio is and it needs to be fixed. And Hollywood Foreign Press and its uh, lack of diversity is just the tip of the iceberg of how dirty the whole entertainment business is. Right. But yeah, that, that was my rant. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, you're, you're fine. Um, I, I'm a lot of good points. I'm glad you said all of that. Uh, I, I think there is something to be said about um, corruption in Hollywood. I, I think there is without a doubt, wholeheartedly without a doubt. Um, and that's not to say that all of Hollywood is corrupt. Uh, again, if this is true, I don't know if this is true. What happened with Brendan Fraser? Um, I know there have been other instances, uh, you know, if this is true with Brendan Fraser and he was groped or he was sexually assaulted, you know, whatever the case may be, just be, you know, just because one person is, you know, kind of the, the sour apple, it doesn't, that one person doesn't speak for the whole group. Just because one person within the HFPA is corrupt, that doesn't mean the entire association is corrupt either. Um, I, I think there are some changes, whether they were intentional or not that need to be made um and you know I, I know there have been other instances of celebrities speaking out against them um scarlett johansson is one of them and i've seen this even prior to any of this happening i knew this was a problem uh she refused to participate in any of the hollywood foreign press associations um you know their their conferences or their you know panels where they were asking them different questions um the the one that comes to mind for me is i believe it was for avengers age of ultron when that movie came out that you know they had rdj and chris evans and lee um chris hemsworth and you know jeremy renner all the avengers all the cast of that film um on a panel for that movie and you know a lot of the HFPA reporters and journalists are, you know, they're asking them questions and, you know, the, the one video, the, uh, um, I think he, what the, the reporter asked Robert Downey Jr., you know, something about Tony Stark's character arc. And it's a serious question. It's a good question. 
um, about Tony Stark's character arc and the arc throughout the MCU and things like that. Um, and then he gets to Scarlett Johansson and they ask a question about, is her clothing too revealing? And it's just like, what the, like, why the hell, who cares? Like, yeah, who, it's like, that, like that's no not, one, no that one is in the not right, the man. kind of question we... that people care about. Like me yeah. as a movie fan, if you're trying to hype me up for Avengers Age of Ultron or for the next MCU film, I don't give a shit what she's wearing. Like, mm-hmm. I don't, I mean, like, yeah, I guess her costume has to be cool, but like, that's not a quest. Like if I could ask Scarlett Johansson a question that would not be the question I would ask her. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's that kind of thing. It, it, it's the the questions they ask. Um, and it's the way that some of their, their members and their reporters conduct themselves in the presence of these celebrities. That That is an, another kind of issue. And I'm, I praise Scarlett Johansson for speaking out against that and for, for coming forward and saying like, look, this is a problem. Like I've encountered this multiple times and I know I'm not the only one. Pro- I mean, mm-hmm. there's probably a slew of spe- female, especially actresses that, that have encountered that same, the, this sexist. Um, super, superficial questions. Yeah. Like about, sexually tailored yeah. questions that just don't need, they, they just don't need to be. Um yeah, I, I just I, I th- that's uncalled for. Like you know, I, it's promote like the it's, movie. Like don't yeah. The, it, if you want like the, if you want people to take the the foreign the I forgot the fucking name of them the Hollywood, Hollywood foreign, foreign press. press. Yeah, if you yeah again like I could care less about them. If you want them, if you want to be taken seriously, like legitimately, like put some good questions out there. And obviously, they do do that for some. Like obviously, as you can see with Robert Downey Jr. But then whenever you get to these uh, female uh, actors and you ask them all these superficial questions, it takes away from the whole panel. It takes away from the whole movie. Right. Like, I'm not going to lie. Yes, there are people that do care about those questions, but they're fucking nitwits. They're, they're nimrods over there that care about the costumes and, like, how tight they are. That's that's not why – that's not well, the reason why we go see the movies. It's one and, thing to care about a costume, but it's another thing to be like – well, I think she should have more cleavage in this costume. Like, shut up. Yeah, like, that's not... No one f- cares that, about that, that. Is, Shut up. Like, that's none of your business. Yeah. Um, and honestly, she should have walked off. I mean, you, have you seen an interview with uh, Robert Downey Jr. whenever they were talking yes, about his when past? They, uh-huh. Was that a Hollywood foreign press? I have no idea. I don't know. I have no it idea. probably was. And uh, guess what? He walked off because it wasn't... It wasn't adding to the movie that right. they were being interviewed for. Right. And you're not adding to the experience. You're mm. not adding to the the questions and the, you know, building information and building hype. You're just you're like you're you're pushing your own agenda. And mm. again, that's not to say I do not mean this as in every single journalist who is a member, an active member, inactive member, whatever, uh, of the Hollywood foreign press is asking these sexist targeted questions. I don't mean that at all. But you know one of the things that they're doing the proof is in the pudding that's what I, that's what i'm saying like if, right well, if there is if there is accusations of the hollywood foreign press being um acting in that way like it's sh- it shows like we see it and it obviously needs to be dealt with because that's not correct journalism i mean i'm i mean i'm not any i'm not a, like i am not, not a yeah i'm not a journalist I'm we do a youtube like, show about YouTuber. movies that's it yeah but <laughs> um when I when I watch because like I enjoy watching those interviews, I think they're pretty cool. I love seeing yeah, me too. these actors talk and all that. But when we when we, when I see questions like that, it's just like you're just you're just like uh, what's it called? You're dimming down the interview as a whole. You're you're killing the yeah. momentum and the vibe of it with these questions. And again, that's just one thing that the Hollywood Foreign Press, again, some of them are doing. That's tarnishing the whole movie going experience you know what i mean right and and, you know we'll get into this again towards towards the end of this segment here um but part of what they're doing is creating a new code of conduct that's part of their new initiative um Mm -hmm. to to improve the association as a whole which is good you need you need to have a you need to have boundaries for your reporters like this type of question is perfectly acceptable this type of question is not 
Mm-hmm. You need to have that because your journalists need to know, like, this is what's expected of you. Like, if you are fortunate enough to be in one of those panels and you can ask these people questions, you need to you need to have a uh, what, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you you need to have some decency and some some honor, you, some you know, decent you, some respect. Yeah, you got this like perfect. You need to have you, some respect for the mm-hmm. people that you're asking the questions to. And because I think the questions part of that, you see there are just because the questions you see are like I don't know either they've already been said, they're already like public knowledge, <laughs> or they're superficial. True. And those questions right there, like. They don't even need to be answered. They don't even need to be on your clipboard. They don't even need to be on your notebooks. It right. doesn't matter. And I don't know. Like it's it. You killed my vibe. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> what were you gonna say? Um, I don't. I don't even know what I was gonna say. I. I. There. There needs to be an improved code of conduct. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, for for these for these journalists and for these reporters. And again, that's not to say that every single journalist. Who is a member of the F, uh, the HFPA, is uh, is asking these type of questions, but there just needs to be, there needs to be boundaries. Um, I, I've always been somebody that like you know I, I've met a couple of celebrities in my life. Like, I, I, a lot of people get starstruck very easy. Oh, I'll get starstruck. I like I I I. Oh, I've like, always I've tried to view them as people. Yet. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you talk about like the hardships with, you know, even look at Michael Jackson, like, you know, again, different music industry, but I, I think Michael Jackson was kind of damaged because you, you can't, when you're never left alone, like people see celebrities as like a different species of human being or something mm-hmm. like that. And well, like, I'm you gonna, know, I'm going to, I'm going to say right here, Michael Jackson was a fairly complicated entertainer and i i yeah i I admit he was he was yeah but i'm saying when you when you you know i I just keep thinking back to that scarlett johansson but i'm a big fan of her i really like scar joe a lot Mm -hmm. and i just i keep thinking back to that video you know when you when you when you're asking serious character plot related questions of all of the male actors and then you get to her and you ask a sexually driven question it's like she has feelings like like these people have these actors have feelings they don't just brush off whatever Mm -hmm. question you ask them like it matters you know what i mean as a human being it matters so i i just i hope that um if anything comes out of this whole thing they need more diversity but they need humility too like every and this shit this goes for everybody Everybody needs to have a little bit more humility and a little bit more grace moving forward. I mean, you, you, you just, exactly like you said, you have to treat people with respect. And right now, it seems like there's not a lot of that going on. Uh, so I, hopefully moving forward, this whole endeavor will, it'll better the association. It'll better the experience. Not only that the actors and actresses have at these d- discussions and these panels, but it'll also it'll be better journalism. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it'll be better journalism. I don't, I don't like. I'm, I'm not saying like these journalists need to be like you know restricted to certain questions, right? I'm because I mean, fuck. I mean, that's you know it goes against I guess the fucking constitution. free speech. It goes against yeah, free, free speech. speech. But it's it's the fact that there has to be an understanding of like there has to be a level of respect and understanding with what you're asking with some of these people. And some people like to hide behind the hide behind that uh, limitations with uh, all this uh, journalism, and they think they could just ask all these uh, quote unquote hard hitting questions that, again, are superficial or already known to the public. And yeah. the, some of these people have already mentioned. And uh, it's I don't know. I hope we see some change in regards to that, because I mean, I mean the movie, the entertainment movie business is not going to go any, go anywhere. Like it's right. gonna stay for oh, forever, almost certain. And if we keep seeing these types of actions happen with these uh, actors, I mean, it's gonna come to a time where the business, the movie business, or the entertainment business is gonna get blacklisted. Like, no one's gonna want to enter that business because of all of the slimy, grimy stuff that happens on the inside. Yeah. And yes, I get it. It's 
um, they say Hollywood isn't paved with the uh, gold, it's paved with the tears of all the other people that haven't made it. And just, I don't know, just that's what that's that's a phrase people say <laughs> that, I, that I've heard. Shit right there, it's some deep <laughs> shit. Yeah. Like, can you imagine you say a kid, a kid coming in wanting to be an actor and they hear that, they're going to get fucking um, scared or they're not, they're going to get thrown off. Yeah. And like, that's, and what's that going to do? It's going to, lower the amount of actors and entertainers in this world and ye, ye, we can't have that i mean that's not that's something that we all need yeah. in this world yeah. and um hopefully we see some change because honestly the more i keep seeing all of these uh actors and actresses and entertainers are just being used as like props to as show pawns yeah as pawns in this business it's it's getting ridiculous to see yeah. Because these are human beings. These are just this is their job. They clock in, they clock out, they have vacations. I mean, they I mean they go home same as every single one of us. And yes, we may be starstruck by them, but they're just they're just they're just people just like us. And I'll uh, tell you what, something that's good to come out of COVID is you know, and I'm not saying COVID was good. That's not what I mean. Don't nobody <laughs> take it that way. Please no nobody one, take it that no way. No one is thinking that, but okay. I do I am getting what you're thinking. But right one of the one of the good things to come out of the situation, making it positive out of a negative, um, is seeing celebrities, I think, in their home environment. Because well, like across the board, we need to see celebrities as human beings. Mm -hmm. They're the same as you and I. Mm -hmm. They just, they're on the, they're on the global stage. People see them every day in movies and music and TV. <laughs> and um, I have the hiccups now. You know, I, it, we need to see them as human beings. Um, uh, you know, other uh, other um, controversies surrounding this whole thing. Uh, you know, it's supposed to be a nonprofit organization or association, mm -hmm. excuse me. Um, but it was reported that members that this L.A. Times investigation reported that members are paid over a million dollars each year to just be on these committees and things like that. So it's like. How nonprofit is that? Is it? Um, you know, again, the big thing right now is that there are no black people on the uh, on on the in the association at all. Um, mm. And then I believe, uh, you know, this happened last month. A member, and I think it's the same member who was associated with the Brendan Fraser thing, <laughs> who has since been expelled, referred to Black Lives Matter as a racist hate movement in a complete email to the rest of the uh the rest of the association which dude look at the world man read the room as you the, as you yeah. always say read the room yeah read the room <laughs> i mean man. like that's not dude that's get, not get okay like that's get with the times it's get with the times man yeah. get with the times and what'd you say they're all a bunch of i don't know middle-aged white guys I, I don't know. I, I believe I'm not certain. I believe it's mostly male. And I know that there were zero African Americans on the entire association. There's none. Mm -hmm. um, as a result of all of this, obviously that we said this before the golden globes have been canceled. Tom Cruise returned his three golden globes to the uh, HFPA that he won for born on the 4th of July, Jerry Maguire and Magnolia. Um, Big, big, big production companies like Netflix, Warner Brothers, um, and all really Warner Media and all of the Warner Media subsidies like HBO Max, HBO, Amazon, NBC, they have all threatened to cut ties. Um, mm -hmm. Here's what Warner Media had to say. They said, while we commend the HFPA's membership approval of the plan to move towards radical reform, we don't believe that the plan goes far enough in addressing the breadth of our concerns, nor does your timeline capture the immediate need by which these issues should be addressed. Warner Media Studios and networks will continue to refrain from direct engagement with the HFPA, including sanctioned press conferences and invitations to cover other industry events with talent until these changes are implemented. So look, you and I have given Warner Media a lot of shit. There are a lot of people who have given Warner Media a lot of shit, but you know what? Yeah, props to them. Props to them, man. Props to Good them and job. Props. Warner Media, awesome job. I mean, that, you know, they're, they're done. I mean, I, I just, I get the vibe that a lot of these production companies are like, if you're going to be this way and if you're going to treat these actors that we have hired to do these films, 
if you're going to treat these actors and actresses that way, and if you're going to, you know, be exclusive in your membership and things like that, we're not going to have anything to do with you. Like we're like, we're going to look the other way and we're going to, we're going to look, you know, that their journalists are not going to be invited to press conferences uh, and, you know, things like that to cover these movies. Um, It's, it's pretty much here. Look like this, this is pretty a little controversial, but it's the reason why they're doing this because they're, because the Hollywood foreign press is currently under, they're currently in the barrel. They're in the barrel and they're going to get torn to, to shreds. And all these other studios, like they're we're with them. They're like, well, we don't want to get any part of the spotlight. So they're pulling their uh, support. That way they're not going to be shined under the light and shown for what they are too. Because again, each studio, I don't care. I don't care. Every single studio and production management has some dirty little secrets in that in that business. And they don't want their skeletons to be unleashed from the closet. So that's why they're pulling away. So they don't, you know, the, the light doesn't get under them. But I think it's great that Warner Bros. is doing that. It's great that the Scientologist Tom Cruise is doing it too. And uh, hopefully uh, more will do that. That way they understand that if you condone or associate, associate yourself with these types of actions, you will be blacklisted. You will be the next one in the barrel. And yeah, that's sounds like a threat, but it's it, it's it's like a warning to the whole entertainment business. It's like, hey, look, times are changing. Either get with it or you're going to get left behind straight up. And that's For I mean, real. that's that's the way I keep thinking about it. Yeah. Absolutely. Think, um, and, and, <laughs> Dang, you know, we got hot on this one. We did. We got hot. But there, there was a lot to cover. And mm-hmm. again, part of this segment, like I wanted to make sure because I was one of the people I didn't fully understand what was going on. So like I dug a lot, like I wanted to make sure that I knew what we were talking about because hopefully this segment, and I'll release this as a standalone video too. Um, hopefully this segment kind of explains a little bit more of what's going on again, similar to the Tony Moran video for Halloween, similar to our Warner media rant. This isn't a, I don't, I don't want to bash anybody. Like I don't want to use our platform and the show that we have created to bash anybody. But again, things like this need to be addressed. Um, and I'm glad that these big movie studios, uh, I'm glad that these actors and actresses, I'm glad that movie fans, I'm glad that these things are being addressed. Um, and it does seem like the HFPA, um, they, they have hired a legal firm to write their new code of conduct, which we've talked already. Um, they've hired a chief of diversity They've promised a 50% increase in membership tailored to underrepresented groups, so probably more African Americans on there. Um, They've promised new administrative positions, and obviously there's a whole lot more. Um, And again, if you look at their Twitter, if if you look at the Golden Globe Twitter account, they have links to all of those, their timeline of events, their timeline of uh of reform things like that on their twitter account so it does seem like they're making necessary changes i just hope that they do it in the right way and i hope that you know like you said there is a lot of corruption in hollywood there is a lot of bullshit that goes along with being in that industry and i hope that this is a good step forward into reforming some of that and into just seeing people as people and not mm-hmm. seeing this as an industry and is not seeing dollar signs and likes and clicks and comments when you look at somebody. Yep. So that's, that's where we're going to end this there. Um, so I know this is an ongoing situation. Um, there's probably a whole lot more to this story than even we had to cut. Co- we got to cover, but I hope that this has helped to explain a little bit of what's going on. Um, and at least you kind of hear our thoughts on it. And uh, so, yeah. Yeah.